Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. From time to time here online, we talk about cases that bother me, quite frankly. Why? Because we want to make sure that there is not a single person in prison who is innocent, right? Because this is the United States of America, and we expect more of our justice system. Now, there's a case that bothers me greatly. We try to highlight cases here that I think have been misreported. Sometimes I'll look at a case, and I'll initially go in with a presumption of innocence, but the facts will tell me that the alleged perpetrator actually did the crime, and I'll say so here online. Other times I look at a case, and I just can't quite understand, no matter how unsavory you know, the personalities are. I just can't understand how the person got convicted. So let's talk about a case that bothers me quite a bit. I'm going to name the people. Before I do, let me say this. I want you to Google the case after I talk about it. I want you to find out the facts of the case so you can challenge the facts I'm reciting here online, and you could put your challenges in the comment section to this video. Let's create a public record. No one has to agree with me. I want you to agree with the facts, right? What you view the facts as. Let me also say, too, I know a lot of what I'm going to say is politically incorrect. I'm fully aware of that fact. It's going to be politically unpopular. But understand, some days you have to be unpopular, right? The question here is whether anyone should have been convicted of a crime, whether a crime was even committed. <clears throat> now, in my opinion, the media coverage of this crime, alleged crime, was a bit biased. The victim was from a stable, middle-class family and got good grades in school, right? The alleged perpetrator wasn't as lucky, dropped out of school, and worked as a waitress, right? Now, let's just name the parties. It's two girls. They're young. They're involved with the same man. Right? One girl's name is Sarah Ludeman. The other girl's name is Rachel Wade. Right? Now, these girls, with the same boyfriend, the same guy they love, are on social media. Whereas you could imagine they're bad mouthing each other. Right? Months earlier, months earlier. Rachel Wade sends Sarah Ludeman a text that says, hey, you know, I guarantee this. I'm going to effing murder you, right? Words to that effect, right? That's six months earlier, right? In fact, it's more than six months earlier. It's more than seven months earlier. Well, understand, this boyfriend who both of these girls loved had a kid with a third woman who would appear from time to time to try to get financial support for their child right now in my opinion this next fact is very important Sarah Ludeman apparently got into a fist fight with this baby mama Ludeman according to reports beat her up right in front of the guy right baby mama comes over Ludeman is there with baby daddy Ludeman doesn't like the idea of baby mama being around her man Ludeman beats up baby mama right 
So, let's fast forward to the night of the alleged crime. Now, Rachel Wade, the waitress, is out walking her dog. Right? Ludeman honks on her horn. Ludeman's in her car. And Ludeman yells, stay away from my man. Right? Drives off. Rachel Wade, emotional, irate. Right? She, of course, calls up Sarah Ludeman, right? Who has driven away. And she says, she's on speakerphone. People hear this. She says words to the effect of, I'm going to kill you and your Mexican boyfriend. Right? That's what she says. I'm going to kill you and your Mexican boyfriend. Right? So, later that night, Sarah decides that she's going to confront Wade. Right? She takes two friends with her. She hears where Wade is. Right? She drives over to where Wade is. Wade is out on a street corner, right, with a couple of friends, right, or out on the street with a couple of friends leaning on a car. Now, this is important. It's very important, right? Wade, after the walking the dog incident earlier in the night, goes into the kitchen and grabs a knife, right? She has a knife on her. Why? Because she was afraid of what Sarah Ludeman might do. So Sarah Ludeman shows up, right? Confronts Wade, drives over to where Wade is, almost hits Wade with the car, hops out of the car, runs over to her with her fists flailing, according to reports, right? Jumps out of the car, leaves the car, comes over to Wade, ready to fight. Her friends tell the cops her purpose in going over there was to confront Rachel Wade, right? And so, I'm just going to read a passage on what happened next from a Tampa Bay newspaper, right? The name of the article is One Teen Boy, Two Teen Girls, and Homicide, right? According to this paper, here's what happened next. Sarah saw Rachel outside a White House leaning against her car talking to two boys. She slammed to a stop, left the keys in the ignition, the engine running, slid out of the driver's seat in her flip-flops, didn't even close the door. She raced toward Rachel, fists flailing. Rachel ran into the road, raised her right hand. With a quick thrust, she jabbed Sarah's shoulder. The next time, the steak knife punctured Sarah's heart. Clutching her chest, Sarah staggered back to the minivan. By then, Josh's sister had climbed out. Get back in, Sarah wailed. We gotta go. She collapsed in the driver's seat, fumbled for her cell. Her hands were sticky with her own blood. She called Josh, the guy they both liked. It hurts, she gasped, sliding into the street. Now, let me say this. If these are the facts, right? If this is what happened, somebody here online in the comment section to this video, tell me why this isn't self-defense. Isn't this self-defense? I got to tell you, you know, 
sounds to me like Rachel Wade, whatever was said before, whatever was said before, sounds to me like Rachel Wade is peacefully hanging out with a couple of friends late at night, right? She's not hurting anybody. She's not doing anything. Rachel Wade could be any of us, right? A car pulls up, someone hops out of the car, comes over to attack her, right? Isn't she entitled to fight back? You tell me. Isn't she entitled to fight back? If the attack doesn't happen, if Sarah Ludeman, who may well be a great person in the rest of her life, but if Sarah Ludeman doesn't show up there, and keep in mind, Rachel Wade has no reason to believe Sarah Ludeman is going to show up there at that time, right? Understand, people carry guns, people carry knives to protect themselves, right? Having a gun or a knife in this case doesn't mean you're out looking for trouble, Right? Doesn't Sarah, excuse me, doesn't Rachel Wade have the legal right to defend herself? Right? Because I'm telling you, if she doesn't, then what we're saying is people can pull up in front of you with their cars, hop out, run over to you, and beat the living daylights out of you. Now, I know many of you are going to say, hey, the knife is excessive, right? Rachel Wade shouldn't have brought a knife to that showdown. Well, let me say this. If the knife is excessive, then at worst, since Rachel Wade is the one being attacked, isn't this manslaughter? At worst right? You're hanging out, someone attacks you. Okay, you take out a knife. If we feel that the knife's unwarranted, that the knife's excessive, and I don't know how it could be, if Sarah runs over and starts throwing punches, you don't know what she has. If someone attacks you on the street, you don't know what they're carrying. I don't believe the law requires you to stand there and think, okay, you know, reading Sarah's mood here while she's throwing punches, reading her mood here, I need to figure out that she just intends to beat me up, to physically injure me, but not kill me. I don't think the law requires that kind of thought process. Someone comes at you, right, throwing fists and stuff like that, I believe you do have, right, the right to defend yourself. If it involves a knife, it involves a knife. Well, let me say this. Just understand that they actually convicted Rachel Wade on these facts of second-degree murder in a case in which the alleged victim hops out a car and runs to her. Right? In a case in which the only reason why Rachel Wade and the alleged victim are on the same street is because the alleged victim went looking for her. Florida actually has a stand your ground law. Think about it. Now we all remember the George Zimmerman case. Let me just tell you, these facts are much more skewed, aren't they? One wonders whether if these two were men, Rachel Wade would have been convicted because it would have been obvious, wouldn't it? That some dude hopping out of car running at you, there with the intention of beating you up, that you would have the legal right to take out a knife to defend yourself, right? This knife is used for no other reason but to 
defend herself, right? To fight off an attack. Right? I don't believe it's disputed. And if I'm wrong here, correct me here in the comment section to this video. I don't believe it's disputed that Sarah Ludeman gets out of her car. Right? That's what the Tampa Bay newspaper reported. Right? Her friends believe she's there to confront Rachel Wade. There's a witness. Now understand, the legal burden is with the prosecution. They have to prove a crime beyond a reasonable doubt. There's a witness, one of the guys Rachel Wade was with, who talks about these girls actually fighting for a while. Right? Before the knife is used. Right? They're, they're fighting for a while. Pulling here and all that other stuff. So while it's unfortunate, while it's a tragedy, that anyone had to die, that this love trio ended up this way, right? I have to tell you that when I come across a case where, you know, someone is in a situation where another person is running toward them to attack them. Right? Bad history between the two. The person who's running toward the other person to attack them has already beaten up the mother of the boyfriend, the boyfriend's child. Right? Has already beaten up baby mama earlier. Right? So as unsavory as these facts are, if I were a juror, I would have felt this was a self-defense case. That nothing would have happened that night if the victim didn't go looking for Rachel Wade. So let me say this. I think we're focusing on the wrong facts. The jury actually got to hear a voicemail. A more than seven month old voicemail from Rachel Wade to Sarah Ludeman, where Rachel Wade, you know, said to Sarah, I'm going to kill you. Guess what? Seven months passed. The two women crossed paths multiple times. Rachel Wade didn't kill her then, did she? Right? The death doesn't happen until Sarah Ludeman actually attacks Rachel Wade. Think about it. In my opinion, the jury should never have heard the voicemail. That voicemail sounds too prejudicial. Not probative enough, in my opinion. Right? There's no evidence that Rachel Wade tried to kill Sarah Ludeman before Sarah decides to go hunting for Rachel Wade. So, if this is still a country in which the prosecution has to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt... How could this case have led to a second-degree murder conviction? That's a farce. Let me say this, too. I have a teenager in my household, right? Older folks don't quite understand social media and don't quite understand what's going on. Maybe they've forgotten when they were teenagers. You know, teenagers do dumb things like post idiotic statements on social media, don't they? I'm guessing a lot of you right now are nodding your heads. You might even know a teenager who's a hothead on social media. Right? People leave stupid messages on voicemails. The bottom line is there is no evidence here that Rachel Wade ever attempted to use deadly force against Sarah Ludeman until Sarah Ludeman attacked her. 
If that's the case, this conviction for second degree murder is a travesty. Right? In my opinion, this should have been an acquittal based on self defense. If you believe the knife is excessive, and I don't know how you can, late at night, someone pulls up in a car, hops out, and is running toward you, right? If you believe the knife's excessive, then it's a manslaughter case. How do you get to second degree on these facts? So please, I encourage you to Google this case. Look up Sarah Luderman and Rachel Wade, right? The boyfriend's name was Josh, right? It's a fascinating case. Unfortunately, in my opinion, it led to an unfortunate conviction, right? Rachel Wade, unfortunately, is in prison serving a lot of years. Her appeal was denied. In my opinion, it should not have been. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit my law firm site, richarddwyer.com. Um, visit my political site, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Admittedly, it leans libertarian. Thanks for stopping by.